Well, all right, welcome in to Cedar Crest Church. So glad you've decided to join us today. My name is Richard Hopkins. I'm one of the pastors on staff and excited about this series that we're in, as you just heard, going through the book of Colossians. And I love the tagline that we have for this series, Jesus over everything. We could take that right there and we could just preach Jesus over everything and walk out the door today. That is so, so good. And so today as we're digging into this message, that really is a a, a theme throughout not only this series, but today's message that I just want to dig in with you. Uh, Man, I think it says it all. Today, if you have your Bible uh, or whatever it is that you look at scripture with, you can go ahead and turn to Colossians 1, 28 and 29, and I'm going to go ahead and tell you what we're talking about today. We are talking about maturity, uh, spiritual maturity to be specific, uh, and man, that, 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 that can sound a little bit difficult to kind of like, okay, w- what does that actually mean? Well, we're going to dig into that. It's also kind of difficult at times to measure uh, what is maturity, like you, you can't take a tape measure and measure it and go, okay, there's the goal. I've, I've arrived. I'm mature. Sometimes that's a little bit difficult to kind of, to kind of put a number on. But um, let me tell you this. When you think about immaturity, all right, you see ma- immaturity when it's happening. You're like, wow, that person is acting immature, right? You know, you know exactly what an immature thing looks like. And I don't know about you. Um, but there have been times in my life where I've done some really immature things. Somebody else, shake your head. Yes, you, you can relate to what I'm talking about right now. Please. Um, my family would say at times, in fun, uh, are you ever going to like graduate from middle school? Because my humor at times is very much middle school humor. Uh, and, and even throw back further, I have so many stories of really kind of silly things uh, that, that I've done, and, and, and specifically in school. I think about when I was early in my elementary days, um, there was a note that was getting passed around the room in our class, and um, it, it said something to the effect of passing gas in your pants. Okay, by the way, I just I cleared that with our team. It's okay for me to say that in church. But anyway, so it's something about passing gas in your pants, and um, it was going around the room, and the teacher grabbed the note, and she was like, who wrote this? And everybody in the classroom went, Richard did. And I was like, me? No, 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 no. That, that was Jean. Jean did it. And so she's like, all right. And by the way, this teacher, I mean, she had that ruler. She had these glasses. I was like, oh, man, you know. Uh, anyway, so she's like, I want you boys to write the word pants on a piece of paper. And so I'm like, well, that's easy. P A. N C E. So I misspelled pants and the word was misspelled in the note. So busted. <laughs> Richard, the, the truth is disclosed. Richard, Richard wrote the note. Man, I don't know why that, that story has stuck with me all these years, but that's just the kind of stuff. You know, at some point, we, we, we actually do have to grow up, right? I mean, you, you can't stay uh, in that kind of humor, but But we do have to grow up, not just in the way that we behave, but we also have to grow up spiritually. We just, we can't just stay in one place. No, no, God is actually calling us to more in our relationship with Jesus. And that, that is where we're going to spend our time today. Again, if you have your Bible, Colossians 1, 28, 29, this is what it says. He is the one we proclaim admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. To this end, I strenuously contend with all energy, Christ so powerfully works in me. So what stands out in this passage, again, specifically the word mature and fully mature in Christ? You might be asking, Maybe you just walked in here and you don't know anything about Jesus and you're like, why should I care? You might might have been following Jesus for the past 50 years. And again, you're asking the question, why should I care? Why is it so important that I become fully mature in Christ, in Jesus? Well, the answer to that is coming, I promise you. But I also wanna click off a few other answers to some questions that are important. What is the definition to fully mature in Christ? How do we, as in each of us, become fully mature in Christ? And what are the marks? What does it look like to be fully mature in Christ? How do we know we're at least on the right track, right? 
Well, I'm gonna answer all of those things. And so let me go ahead and just start, start digging into this. The first one is, let's look at the definition. Again, mature, a little bit difficult to measure. But when it comes to our spiritual lives, when it comes to following Jesus, this is how we know we're on the right track. And that this is the definition I'm gonna put to it. It's simply this. The more you are like Jesus, the more mature you are. The more you are like Jesus, the more mature you are. It is that simple. You have an identity in Jesus, and the more you become like him, the more mature you are. It is literally like we are talking about in this series, putting Jesus over everything. It has to be said right up front, man, that we're, we're never going to fully arrive this side of eternity, by the way. Like, you know, when Paul's talking about being fully mature, he's not saying perfection that's not gonna happen until we meet Jesus. There's actually a cap on our maturity because we are broken, right? Uh, so Paul, Paul's not, not even saying that about himself. Look at uh, Philippians 3.12. He wrote this about himself. Not that I have already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ took hold of me. Paul is on a journey. We are on a journey in becoming fully mature. And there's a churchy word that we use for that. So if you've been around church for a while, this, this will sound very, very normal. If you haven't, uh, this may be new to you, but th the word is sanctification. We're being sanctified. We're being refined. As we are becoming closer and closer to Jesus, as we become more and more like him, there's a sanctification process. We're on a journey. We're all in a different place with Jesus, this journey that we are on. Sometimes we're moving up and down the scale, by the way. For those of us who are following Jesus, man, we may, we may look in our rear view mirror and go, ooh, man, there was a season there where I was kinda, I was stuck. I wasn't necessarily acting on what I knew I was supposed to do. Um, maybe I made a decision years ago and, and, and then I didn't do anything. I just kinda sat there. The, the car was in neutral and it was, maybe even rolling downhill in reverse. Why does that happen? Oftentimes, it's because we don't know any better. We're just kind of content to stay where we are. Yeah, I made a decision for Jesus. I'm good. But here's a fact about this. This is something we need to realize. Jesus will meet you wherever you are. He will meet you right where you are. I don't care where you are. But he loves you way too much to leave you where you are. No, there is an expectation that when you are following Jesus, that you're going to follow what Jesus has for you. And when we do, when that happens, we're going to grow. We're going to become more mature in him. And that leads us to the next question. How do we, as in you and me, become fully mature in Christ? It's as simple as this. Trying to keep these uh, things simple today, they really are simple. Uh, and, and here it is. It's hearing what Jesus has to say, what the Lord is speaking to us, and then obeying. We actually respond to what he's asking us to do. That's how that journey happens for us as we're following Jesus and becoming more like him. But it's the hearing piece, and then it's the acting piece that is actually crucial. You know, there are so many things competing for your attention. Uh, you're talking to yourself. You're probably talking to yourself right now. And you're going, man, what's he gonna say next? I mean, you're, you're vo you're, there's a voice in your head all the time. Uh, and, and we're trying to figure out which voice to listen to. Is that of God? Is that not of God? Like, wh what in the world? I mean, there's a, a life hack to this and a pro tip that you need to hear. Uh, cliche, whatever, whatever, whatever you wanna call it. That the voice in your head isn't always speaking truth. It's not always the right voice. The me, myself, and I can actually take you in the wrong direction when it comes to spiritual maturity, take you uh, down a less mature path. I, I know for me personally, that's definitely happened over the years. You know, there are voices competing for your attention all the time, all day, every day. Uh, I love being a grandparent. It, it has been so much fun being on this journey. I have a uh, four-year-old grandson named Barrett. And Barrett just started playing on a baseball team about a week and a half ago. 
And this, this guy, he, he loves baseball. He, he can catch, he can throw, he can hit. I mean, the, the guy's got an arm like John Smoltz, man. I'm like, come on, let's go. Where are the scouts? But here's, there's one little problem, one little problem. At four years old, in their first scrimmage game, and no one, I didn't see this coming. Uh, he's at third base. And by the way, he doesn't know what third base is. He's just, he's playing that position. This, this, this is when the lights kind of came on. He has no idea how to play the game. I mean, none. There, there's the fundamentals of the game. At all, he, there's nothing. So uh, uh, one of the kids in a scrimmage game hits the ball, and the ball goes rolling between him and second base, and he just watches it go by. <laughs> He's like, that's cool. And then, then there's a runner on second, and by the way, when the ball's going by, everybody's yelling at Barrett, Barrett, get the ball, get the ball, get the ball, get the ball. There's coaches everywhere, there's parents, there's grandparents, we're all telling him what to do, and he's like, I don't know what's going on out here. And then there's a runner coming from second, same thing again, tag him out, tag him out. He's like, what is an out and what is tagging? I, I, I don't know any of this stuff, but I love Barrett's response in this. Instead of him throwing his glove on the ground, and, and throwing a temper tantrum or whatever a four-year-old might do, he, he did what his coaches instructed him to do. He got in position, and he's like looking at home plate, and he's like ready to go, gloves out, and everything else is happening around him. The action's going, it's just crazy, but he's in position because he knows that's what he's supposed to do. At the end of the day, he was so confused by all the voices. There were other Barretts on the field. It was wild. But what Barrett did He's like, no, I, I'm, I can't do this. Like, I'm just gonna do what I know to do. Because a confused mind says no. Like, there's so many voices coming in, he didn't know what to do. And you know what? That happens with us. We get voices all the time from things, and we don't really know what to do with those things. Man, there's just agreements, disagreements, even theology stuff. But here's the great news. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. His voice will lead us to become more like him. Man, that, if we can trust in that, if we can believe that, we can become more like Jesus. We can hear his voice. Derek talked about this last week. Eliminating the distractions so that we can hear his voice is critical. We have to know, like, okay, is that, is that of God? Is the Holy, Spirit, the Holy Spirit speaking through that person or through a certain situation? Listen, it, it is possible that we could hear Jesus audibly. That may have happened with you. That's, that's actually never happened with me where I've actually heard Jesus speak to me directly. But I will tell you, I hear from Jesus all the time, over and over, daily. How does that happen? How does that happen for us? Well, I'm going to give you something called the five CSs. Pastor Van has unpacked these before. This is from a church leader in England, a vicar pastor. His name is Nicky Gumbel. And by the way, if you're taking notes, great, but also know this is in the discussion guide today, and it's available on our app. So let me, let me hit these. Um, the first one is this, commanding scripture. This is, this is a way that we hear from God. And it's why you hear all the time, man. You should be in your Bible, right? Like, because you're actually hearing from God as you read his word. His word is him. It's, it's from him. And so oftentimes when you have something going on in your life and you're like, man, should I do this? Uh, or or how, how does it compare to scripture? That's a way for us to hear from God. You know you get confirmation through his word if it's the right thing or, or the wrong thing to do. And then there's compelling spirit. It's, it's calling on God. It's, it's, it's praying uh, and, and asking Jesus to give you um, a download, like his word. Like what is he saying to you? And guess what? You will hear from him in your heart as you do that. That comes through dreams. That comes through impressions. That comes through words of knowledge, vision. And again, it could actually hear from, you could actually hear from Jesus audibly. The third one is the council of the saints. Super important. You have people around you who, who are following Jesus and you can trust them. And they, they give you counsel on, is that of God? Is that not of God? Am I hearing from him? You, you hear from your friends. You hear from the people that you know and trust are following Jesus. And then they speak into your life. The fourth one is common sense. God gave you a brain. God gave us the ability to discern and decide, like, does that make sense in light of these other things that we're talking about? It, it's as simple as that. Like, you actually can process that and go, all right, that is of God or that is not of God. And the fifth one is 
Circumstantial signs. God opens doors. God closes doors. God sometimes says, wait. He puts you in a situation where there might be a matter of endurance and you're kind of in a holding pattern. And there's nothing worse when you decide not to hold, right? And you just do it anyway. Probably been through that. I know I have. But oftentimes it's about trusting him and waiting on a door to open or determining if a door is closing. Now, God moves through those things. He speaks through those things. Those five CSs are powerful. And you know, it happens actually right here in the church as well. I want to take you back to Colossians 1.28. Let's look at what Paul is saying here. I want to break down some of these words. I'm going to read it again. He, Jesus, is the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone fully mature in Christ. So let's look at these words. Proclaim. What are we talking about there? That literally is preaching the gospel. That's preaching Jesus. Man, that happens in the church. And that is one of the ways that we become fully mature. We're, we're sitting under that proclamation. The second one, admonishing, maybe you know that word, maybe you don't. Another word for it is warning, where, where you actually hear like, hey, don't go this way, D- don't do it. You're supposed to be going this way. That, that's, that's an example of, of a warning. Then there's teaching. There's, there's that, man, it's being explained to me in a way where the cookies are being put on the bottom shelf. And it's like, all right, I actually understand what's being said here. It's explained to me in a way where, where I actually, I get it. And then there's wisdom. Uh, again, Derek spoke to this last week about wisdom actually being, yeah, it's knowledge, but then it's actually knowledge that's getting applied. And so you also hear that in the church. It's like, all right, I'm receiving this knowledge. I'm acting on what I'm hearing, and it's good. It, that, that's an example of wisdom. That's what Paul is talking about here. And by the way, that should all sound familiar because that's happening here at Cedarcrest every Sunday and on first Wednesdays as well. And right now you might be saying, hey, that's great. That's what I was expecting. That's what I was hoping for. That's why I'm coming in here. I want to I want to become fully mature in Christ. I want to hear the message from the front. But here's the deal. Here's the deal with this. It actually doesn't just happen up here. No, you're actually part of the process. You're part of the process in becoming fully mature. You're sitting under all of that, but then you have to decide what you're actually going to do with it. You have to receive it, and then you have to respond to it. There's something in you that says, I'm going to do something about what I'm hearing. I've been going this way, and I'm turning this way because I hear, I heed the warning, right? I now understand what I'm hearing. It's being explained to me in a way that I am actually going to act on it. Man, I don't know about you, but I've actually been where you're sitting, and Pastor Van will be up here preaching the word, doing all these things we're talking about, and all of a sudden, it's like, has he been reading my journal? Like, bro, I got, uh, uh, he's looking directly at me and he's speaking directly at my heart, you know? You ever had that happen to you? Man, that's the, that's the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. God speaking through whoever happens to be up here. And you're going, man, God's been reading my mail right now. And like, he, God truly is talking to me. I need, I need to do something about it. Now, here's the danger. Here's the danger in this. We hear it, and then we just sit on it. We just sit on it. Uh, Paul actually warns us in 1 Timothy 4.2. He says uh, there's a searing of a conscience when we just sit under this all the time, and then we don't actually act on it. Our spiritual senses become dulled. The old saying, sitting in the stands ain't the same as playing the game. No, actually, we're all players on the field, and we're called to engage and apply what we are learning. Now, I am a Gen Xer, and not too far from being a baby boomer, and one of the things that I know, I can speak to this generation, because I'm one, and I can tell you that we love, 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 love knowledge. I love it. I mean, I'm like, come on, another Bible study. I need more. I need more. I mean, feed me. Give me a feedback. Just keep putting it down in there. I need all the knowledge I can get. I love it. The, the problem with that is, is that we've, there's a belief that says the more I know, the more I will grow. But you know, that's actually not true. That's actually not true. No, the more you know, 
the more you will sit under conviction of that knowledge unless you are doing something about it. Man, that's tough. That's tough, but I'm preaching to myself right now as I'm saying that. So how do we guard against that hearing? I wanna go back to the passage again. Man, this is good. Look at what Paul says. He doesn't say, he is the one I proclaim. No, he says, he is the one we proclaim. Man, that is huge. We present fully mature in Christ. Yes, Paul's talking about his ministry team. He's talking about Timothy, Epaphras. He's talking about the, the church. But he's also talking about us. We are the church. We are part of the process. That we is huge. So it's not just about Paul and his team. It's about us. It's about us. So I, I want to make this point um, go just a little deeper. Go to Colossians 3.16. Fast forward there. Um, Colossians 3.16 says this. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Did you catch that? Did you catch that? One another. One another. Notice, I mean, many of the words are the same. There's teaching, admonishment, wisdom, but the words one another, we are, we are on the hook for this. It's about us. It's about each other. It's not just about hearing the message on Sunday. No, this, this one another thing is through the week. In other words, we are to teach each other, admonish, and there is a wisdom that goes with that as we are speaking to each other. The Holy Spirit is speaking in and through you with the people that you're hanging out with. And by the way, this is where you're gonna, in your mind, you're going, oh, this is, this is where Richard is gonna tell us that we should be in a small group. Yes, <laughs> you should be in a small group. If you're not in a small group, get in one. And if you are in one, I don't care if you're the leader, I don't care if you're the host, I don't care if you just joined one and you're attending today, this is where this stuff happens. This one another, that's the secret sauce. Our, our maturity only goes so far. It only goes so far unless we are engaging with one another in all these things that Paul is talking about. How? How do we become fully mature, man? It is drawing close, close to God. It is listening for his voice through the various ways that we've described and, and him speaking, and then it's responding. It's receiving and responding to what he says and helping one another do the same. Finally, I, I, I promise I wanna, I wanna also unpack some of the bigger marks. Like, what's it look like? What's it look like to be fully mature in Christ? And by the way, this is not exhaustive. This is just some of the, the, the bigger things that I'll mention here. The first one, and the most important, is that you recognize your brokenness. We're broken. We're broken. We are completely dependent on Jesus. We cannot become fully mature unless we're willing to recognize the gospel, that Jesus died for our sins, that he rose again, that he's at the right hand of the Father. Man, we, we, Jesus over everything, right? And we have, we have a completely dependent heart. Otherwise, we are totally messed up. Famous pastor D.L. Moody in the 1800s said this, I've had more trouble with myself than any other man I've ever met. Yes and amen, that's me. I mean, I can relate to what he's saying there. We're a hot mess without Jesus. Without the gospel, we could never be fully mature or holy. And if we don't get this, if we miss this piece, it's not gonna happen. That fundamental truth needs to be nailed down in our hearts. Second one is this, is that you put Jesus on the throne. Literally, Jesus over everything. And that's easier said than done, but he is the destination for our maturity. In everything related to our lives, he is number one. We can't mature unless we put him on the throne. And we need the Holy Spirit for that to happen. We have to rely on him that he rules. And it has to start with a consistent walk with him, that we're spending time with him. We're abiding and remaining in him. He's remaining in us. We have a trust with him. We believe in what he is doing. And, and I want to speak to this, just kind of to the side for a moment. This is not about, this is not about checking the box. No, because when you get into check the box mode, oh, I spent time with Jesus today. No, that's not the way it works. No, it's a relationship. It's a relationship. If you flip that, that's when it becomes religion. 
It's not out of obligation or duty. No, it's out of delight. We talk about that in, in week one in our freedom groups. And, and when you do that, when you do that, that maturity piece begins to happen. We, we start walking in the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gen- faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, all those great things that actually enable you to love people. And that actually has to begin with loving Jesus. It's loving him. It's loving him. I have to ask, how's your heart with loving Jesus? Is it out of obligation? Or do you say, man, I, I love Jesus because I love the fact that he loves me. He loves me so much. He loves me so much. That's a value at Cedar Crest. Love God and love people. That's the great commandment. The final thing I want to mention to you related to being fully mature in Christ is that you actually understand that you're called and you have a purpose. Do you know your spiritual gifts? Are you aware of what those are? God has given you, if you follow Jesus, God has given you at least one spiritual gift. I guarantee you, you got more than that. But do you know what they are? And are you using them? This comes, this, here comes my, uh, my growth track plug right here. Week one, week two, week three, every month uh, on Sunday, we do growth track. And that's where you can discover your spiritual gifts and use those to build his church. Man, I said this earlier, um, but I'm gonna say it again. Jesus meets us right where we are, but he loves us too much to leave us where we are. And that's what it looks like to be on a journey to becoming fully mature in Christ. Jesus is meeting you here today, right now, right now, right now. He's meeting you. He's inviting you to grow in him. Man, when you lean in with him and you put him over everything, you're going to grow. You're going to become more mature. You're going to be fully mature in Christ. Now, I want to answer one more question for you. I promised you that I would answer the why behind the what. Why why is it important that we would become fully mature in Christ? Why, Why should I care? I'm just going to use Jesus' words. John 8, 32, Jesus says this, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And then in John 10, 10, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. That's why, that's why we wanna become fully mature in Christ. A life that we are set free and living to the fullest. That happens here and now and in eternity. That's the life change that Jesus intends for all of us. And ultimately, it will point to a time where you meet him perfected and you will hear these words, well done, good and faithful servant. Mm. As we close, uh, I just wanna ask you, what is your next step in becoming fully mature in Christ? For some of you today, this might be the very first time that the lights have come on for you in your heart and you're saying, I, I, I've never actually made a decision to follow Jesus. I'm gonna give you that opportunity here a moment. I'm gonna pray and you can pray with me to make a decision for salvation. Today is the day for salvation. And then for us, those who are following Jesus now, what is God calling you to? What, what is your next step? I wanna give some space to that so that the Holy Spirit can speak directly to you and that you would actually receive it and then respond to whatever the Holy Spirit is saying. So if you don't mind, bow your heads. And again, um, if you haven't made a decision for Jesus, I'm gonna pray a prayer that will allow you to do that right now. Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for the things that I've done wrong against you, for the sin of my life, Would you please forgive me? I now turn from everything that I know is wrong. Thank you that you died on the cross for me so that I could be forgiven and set free. Thank you that you offer me forgiveness and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Please come into my life and my heart and by your Holy Spirit that I may be with you forever. I wanna follow you, Jesus. I wanna follow you. For the rest of us here, I'm just gonna give some time and space for the Holy Spirit to speak.
by it. Lord, we're listening. What is it you're calling us to? What, what, do, you, what, what do you need from us today, Jesus, that, that you don't want us to stay where we are, that we wanna become more like you. We wanna be fully mature in you, Jesus. Would you speak? Would you make that known to us, Lord? We're on a journey with you. We wanna look just like you, Jesus, one day when we meet you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. And it's in your name I pray, amen.